President Obama and top intelligence officials, their hands forced by leaks from NSA intelligence contractor Edward Snowden, have been out there trying to justify the vast National Security Agency spying programs. The latest attempt came today at a House Intelligence Committee hearing where top law enforcement officials made their case. In recent years, these programs, together with other intelligence, have protected the U.S. and our allies from terrorist threats across the globe to include helping prevent the terrorist, the, the potential terrorist events over 50 times since 9-11. Kind of some interesting language there. These programs, together with other intelligence, have protected the U.S. and its allies from threats across the globe. A lot of caveats and expansive trap doors there. Of those 50 threats mentioned by NSA Director Keith Alexander, FBI Deputy Director Sean Joyce listed four terror events that he claims were disrupted either by the collection of Americans' phone records or by monitoring foreign online activity. One, Najibul Azazi's plot to bomb the New York subway system in 2009. Joyce says they caught a terrorist in Pakistan emailing Zazi and they used phone records collections to find the co-conspirator. Two, a plot to bomb the New York Stock Exchange involving Khalid Ozani, who was in the U.S., which the FBI found out about through online communication with a known extremist in Yemen. Ozani pleaded guilty to providing financial assistance to al-Qaeda in 2010. The stock exchange is not commenting on this supposed plot. And for his part, Ozani's lawyer told CNN he had nothing to do with any plot to blow up the New York Stock Exchange. Three, the plot to bomb a Danish newspaper for publishing a cartoon of the Prophet Muhammad. This involved, as you know, David Headley, a U.S. citizen, which the FBI says it found out about through online contact with an al-Qaeda-linked terrorist. Headley is serving 35 years in prison for that and for helping to plan the Mumbai attacks in 2008. Four, for this one, we think Joyce was referring to the FBI using phone records collections to catch an individual convicted earlier this year of sending money to Al-Shabaab. Al-Shabaab is an Al-Qaeda-linked group in Somalia, convicted along with three others. Now, how hard did the committee question these officials? Well, the hearing's official title was How Disclosed NSA Programs Protect Americans and Why Disclosure Aids our adversaries. A tougher audience might have been found in a rare 45-minute interview President Obama gave to PBS's Charlie Rose overnight. The president has watched his approval ratings plummet this month. He defended these NSA programs, especially phone data mining. What happens then is, is that the FBI, if in fact it now wants to get content, if in fact it wants to start tapping that phone, it's got to go to the FISA court with probable cause and asked for a warrant. But so, has FISA courts turned down any request? They, because, the first of all, Charlie, the, the number of requests are surprisingly small, okay. number one. Number two, folks don't go with a query unless they've got mm -hmm. a pretty good suspicion. Should this be transparent in some way? It is transparent. That's why we set up the FISA court. It is transparent. Transparent. That's an interesting word to describe the FISA court, which operates with near total secrecy. You keep using the word. I don't think it means what you think it means. The FISA court is also not a court in the way most of us understand. There are not two sides to every case, and there's no one there to challenge what the government claims before the FISA court. 